In astrophotography, there's a lot of talk about something called calibration frames. So behind each astrophoto, there's a series of images, complex math, and some creative processing done to each and every photo. And calibration frames are sort of the unsung hero of this processing world. And they're responsible for why many of the images that you see uh, look so amazing. Um, much of what we see from these astrophotographic images um, are light frames. Um, they're literally the photos that one would take to gather enough light coming from across the universe and into your camera. And you'd be excused for thinking that these are the only kind of frames that we capture. Um, because they're responsible for the bulk of what we see when we look at these images. But that, that's not the entire story. Um, in the beginning, most people just getting into the hobby are content with just shooting light frames and that's it. Until you learn about things like thermal noise, bias noise, hot pixels, vignetting, banding, gradients, dust. So how do you deal with all of these? Uh, well, that's the thing. They need to be deducted out of your images using something called calibration frames. So let's take a look at the three main types, um, what they are, how to capture them, and how many you need. Darks are the first and most important calibration frame there is. Dark frames are responsible for mitigating the noise inherent in long exposure photography. That digital noise is magnified by three factors, ISO, shutter speed, or the length that your shutters open, and temperature, which is probably the most important. So in order to get the best result um, to subtract out, the dark frames need to be captured at the exact time or roughly around the same time as all of your light frames. If you've ever heard of long exposure noise reduction, then you've probably heard of dark frames. Long exposure noise reduction is your camera's way of calibrating out this noise signal um, inherent when you take a long exposure. So when you turn on long exposure noise reduction, your camera's actually taking two photos. Um, it takes the light frame at whatever shutter speed you've asked it to take, and then immediately after, it closes the shutter and takes a dark frame at the exact same length and hopefully the same temperature of the sensor in the camera. Then, using software inside the camera, it uses that dark frame as a base to sort of subtract out the dark noise or pull that dark noise out from the light frame. This works well for single exposures, but it's a terrible idea to have long exposure noise reduction on for astrophotography. And that's mainly because we're dealing with a series of images or many images that are going to be stacked together. Uh, we're trying to find like a median or um, some sample of reoccurring noise across all these images taken, which is why we take all the images together in a series. So for those of us using traditional digital cameras, the easiest way to collect these images is at the end of a nightly light frame session. Um, you simply cover up the objective of your lens or scope and rattle off another 25 to 50 of these frames with the exact same settings. Easy peasy. So since I travel to the location where I'm shooting all of my astro images. Um, when I'm ready to do my dark frames, I take the camera off of my lens or scope uh, with the intervalometer still attached, and I put it in my camera bag and I do my dark series of images zipped up in my insulated camera bag um, on the ride home. And that saves me from spending more time on site. Flats probably the most overlooked calibration frame there is. Flat frames are responsible for adjusting the evenness of exposure across your entire image. Uh, when properly taken, they can help reduce the effects of lens vignetting and dust on the sensor. If you've ever used a lens at its widest possible aperture, like f1.8 or 2.8, um, you've probably run into seeing vignetting in your final image. And that's okay, that's exactly what's supposed to happen when you're using a lens that has a very wide aperture and bringing in a lot of light to the sensor. To get rid of it, you've probably used something called lens corrections as an option, either in your camera or on the computer. Do not use lens corrections for astrophotography. Flat frame calibration is the best and most accurate way to get rid of the effects of lens vignetting, gradients, or dust on the sensor. And they're unique to each imaging session. 
Flats are meant to be taken without altering your imaging train in any way. So no adjustments to focus, zoom, or rotation of the camera. Ideally, they should be taken directly after you take your light frames. So the only change in this case is going to be your exposure time or your shutter speed. Aperture and ISO are gonna remain constant. So from there you have two methods. Uh, the first method is called the t-shirt method. So you take your lens, point it straight up like this, take a t-shirt and you're gonna wrap it around your lens and then take a rubber band and put the rubber band over your lens like so. Then you're gonna take your lens and you're gonna point it directly at a laptop screen or a computer screen uh, to do this. The closer you get, the better because that ensures that the evenness of exposure is even from you know one side to the other of your lens. That's the most important thing. Uh, after you have that all set up, um, you're gonna use aperture priority um, to ensure that the data in your histogram is gonna be right down the middle. Um, and aperture priority is gonna help you get there. You can use manual mode too, just as long as the shutter speed is the only factor that you've changed. Um, and the data spike in the histogram, again, right in that halfway point. Um, lastly, once you get all that set, you're gonna take about 25 to 50 of these images. So the second method to take flat frames is by using a tablet, like this. Um, you're going to take a white image and make sure that it stretches across the entire frame. You're gonna point your lens straight up like this while it's still on the tracker. And then you're gonna take your tablet and you're gonna put it directly over top, like so. And again, using aperture priority, making sure the histogram is right in the middle, um, you're going to take 25 to 50 frames. Simple as that. Biases. Easily the most confusing calibration frame. Bias frames are used to mitigate the inherent gradient of your sensor. Your camera has a base level of noise across all the pixels in your sensor, or bias noise. And stacked bias frames can help remove this inherent sensor gradient. Bias frames can be taken at any time, before or after your imaging session. It really doesn't matter, it's just about convenience to you. The only requirement is that the sensor be covered. That's it. Um, then, at the same ISO of your light frames, you'll wanna set the shutter speed to the fastest possible that your camera will allow. This is because we only want that base level of readout noise at that given ISO from your light frames. So if your camera is capable of shooting at 1 8,000th of a second, use that. Uh, you're gonna take about 50 to 100 of these. I personally take these images after my imaging session, usually the next day, and I take about 50 of them. Okay, let's recap. Dark frames, you're gonna cover your lens or your camera body. Remember to repeat the same settings from your light frame, so the same ISO and shutter speed. You could take these after your flat frames, like I do. Um, I have my camera just like this with the intervalometer still attached, put it in my camera bag, and as that intervalometer is running to take those dark frames, I'm driving home. You should take 50 of these. Flat frames, remember the two methods. If you're gonna use the t-shirt method, remember to cover the lens with a t-shirt and point it at something nice and evenly lit, like a laptop or computer screen displaying a white image. Or method number two, the tablet or tracing table method, where you do the exact same thing, but on your tablet you have a white image covering the whole screen and you put it on top like that. Remember to use aperture priority with the same ISO and aperture settings as your light frames. Since you don't really wanna to touch anything or kick anything out of balance, it's best to take these frames directly after your light frames. You're gonna to wanna to take 50 of these. Bias frames. Cover your lens or camera body. Shoot in manual mode at an 8,000th of a second with the same ISO as your light frames. You can take these anytime you want, and you'll need 50 of these. So really, that's all there is to it. Um, they're not that difficult to take once you wrap your head around the process of getting it all set up. 
So after you have all the images taken from your shooting session, I put them in their own labeled folder to make it easier for the processing part. So that kind of looks like this, where you have one folder labeled, let's say M42, because that's what we shot. And then in that folder, you have a subfolder called lights, a subfolder called darks, a subfolder called flats, and a subfolder called biases. And all of your individual shots are gonna go into there, and that's gonna make it super easy when we go to process these images, or when you process Process these images at your own time. So get out there, enjoy the night sky, take these calibration frames, your astro images are going to thank you for it.